Hello, Hello and welcome to Down the Slope. It's our second episode of the week. If you're watching on YouTube, mind your business. Yes, we're recording this on Monday night when we are recorded our State of the Game episode one. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, then I um, apologise for that initial rant at the start there. Um, lads, we all okay? Like I say, if you've already listened to State of the Game, they're doing just as well as they were when you listened to that first episode, but we all good? Yep. Uh, uh, being honest, I'm... it was the same day because I don't think I put I think I've still got the same t-shirt on <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a bit taken aback by the energy I'm loving it keep it up but yeah no it's all the water there you no look if you haven't listened to episode one of State of the Game yet uh, we focused all about Scottish football media uh, I would definitely point your way point you in the way of that um, it's probably a lot better than what we're about to produce here. <laughs> Going back to the day job, talking about Hibs. Um, obviously, it was fantastic to be joined by Adam of Old Farm Facts fame. Um, but yeah, Harry, a weekend of no Hibs. Um, good or bad? Being honest, mate, like um, I've just had one of those weeks, as, as you touched on on last week's pod, I was working USC London and stuff, but like I was, it was, it was a very hectic couple of weeks in terms of work life for me. Um, so the fact I didn't have Hibs to ruin what was a very chilled out and relaxed weekend. Um, obviously, if they'd won, it would have heightened it. But the fact they weren't playing, I think, was probably a good thing because it meant I could just kind of detox from life. Normally, when Hibs don't play, I get in this little like mini depressive state of not knowing what to do at Saturday at three. Whereas me and Bex just kind of—that's my sister, by the way. If you don't know, uh, we just kicked about Hyde Park in the sunshine. It was class. Nice, mate. Nice. I had a very nice, chilled out weekend as well. Um, I think I'd, I'd, I appreciated that. I think, Greg, what about yourself, mate? Hibs, good or bad? Or no Hibs, sorry, good or bad? Uh, as bad as it is, you do miss it, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've not been great lately, apart from Motherwell, but yeah, you, you do miss it, to be fair. It does become a big hole in your, in your weekend. Liam, Sam Fender on Saturday night, better than going to Easter Road on a Saturday, or <laughs> not so much? I tell you what, um, Sam Fender definitely turned up and performed, which is not always the case <laughs> of on Easter Road on a Saturday. I uh, could have enjoyed that. Maybe, maybe it wasn't that good. Maybe it was just a, an all-day session in Glasgow, having been out on a Friday night as well. Um, that was making me think he was good. But uh, I was a bit tender yesterday, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling back to 100% today, though. My powers of recovery, despite my advancing years of age, uh, are, are still, still, still well intact. Good. Uh, you mentioned you were out on Friday night, how up at Hall of Fame. Good night. It was a good night, aye. Um, good night. I've got to say, the players that were inducted, a lot of them um, were kind of from before my era. So I was, I didn't know who the people were that were getting inducted before we got there. Um, I recognised Gordon Hunter, and he was probably the only one, if I'm being totally honest, um, initially, when I first got in there. Um, and then as the night went on, I was like, oh, that's John Blackley over there. You see, that's John Blackley. Um, but yeah, we 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 struggling with that. I actually, being totally honest, did not know who Laura Kennedy was, but was absolutely blown away by the football career that she had. Uh, for Hibs, she was the first female inducted to the Hibs Hall of Fame. Something like forty odd caps for Scotland while she's yeah. played for Hibs and was a one club woman played for the club for nearly fifteen years, I think. Um, so obviously, you know, a real top player, but um, played for Hibs as a hobby, as she said on the night. So um, no, it was really interesting, really good, uh, nice to be in the company of some some legends on the evening too. Good, good. And sorry, Ewan, if you don't mind me jumping in, I just want to say fair play, Liam, for actually admitting that. I think there was quite a few people on the Twitter sphere that were like, I'm not going to lie, I, I, apart from Gordon Hunter, I hadn't heard of them myself. Um, I'm, I'm glad they got to go there and we got, we got to hear their stories, but I just don't understand why people on Twitter all make up that they know these people when they don't. Yeah, but when it came to Laura Kennedy, I recognised her face, and I'll tell you why. It was purely because there used to be a page in the programme about the women's team. Oh, that yeah, was that literally, that was it. That was the extent of my knowledge. Like, and that's the, that's just, it was just, it almost brought back memories of being a kid, going to Easter Road mm-hmm. and scrolling through the programme every Saturday. That, that was all. Um, but look, um, let's go even further back in time. Um, obviously, there was no game at the weekend, but Leading up to the weekend, we found out that Ryan Portress's uh, red card appeal had not been overturned and, in fact, extended. Me and Liam gave our thoughts on it on last week's podcast. Um, Harry, Greg, what are your thoughts on the appeal being unsuccessful? Was it, obviously, in hindsight, a poor decision from the club? <laughs> but what do you make it all? I'll let you jump in first, Greg. Um, I mean, it's not a red card, so the club are right to go after it. Um, the rules clearly state that... If you if you're eyes on the ball, um, then you can be sent off regardless of penalty or not. Um, so yeah, 
mad decision. Um, I think Pope just finds his anger on Instagram as well. Um, so yeah, not a red card. I, I think the club are well within their rights to appeal it. Um, because by the, the letter of the law, it's not a red card. Um, and I was taking a bit of stick at the pub for that on, on Saturday, but I'll die on that hill. Yeah, Harry, does the well, you can tell us obviously what your actual thoughts were on the decision whether you thought the ball was there to be played or not. But um, does the fact that there has been debate, even amongst Hibs fans, show that there is a suggestion that Hibs did have a chat? What was it? The game was extended because there was no realistic chance of it being overturned, basically. Mm-hmm. Now, I'd just like to say Ryan Kent didn't get a game extra ban when he hooked Scott Brown and Rangers appealed it. But that's, yep. that's by the by. Um, but in, in my opinion, like um, I completely get what Greg said there, but you've kind of got to play the man. Um, we know for a fact, like as soon as I seen the red card back, I completely understand why a lot of Hibs fans were abject against it. But we know for a fact that's not getting overturned. So for the, from that perspective, I think it is somewhat of a silly appeal. I, as, as Greg said, by the letter of the law, it should be overturned, and it was the incorrect decision. But if you know that it's not going to get overturned, turn then what's what's the point in risking Ryan Porches out for an extra game we're at crunch time in the season we're potentially not getting into the top half which means not getting into Europe we can't afford to have key players missing um, and for me I don't know who made the decision in the end but they made a massive error in judgment and we could suffer for it can I so this is this is something right and I've seen a lot of people criticize the club for it saying it could be almost season defining so right but he's going to be available for the for the Scottish Cup semi right so either way, he was missing the run into the split and one split game. Now he's missing two split games. Now it's yet to see what if that's going to be top six, bottom six, who it's going to be. But he was going to miss the games anyway. You know, he was going to miss the Dundee United game. He was going to miss the game at Tyne Castle and the first game after the split. So whether we appealed or not, he wasn't going to help us. Because I've seen people say, oh, what if we miss out on Europe? Because we might not even get top six. Well, either way, the only way he was going to be able to play a part in that was by appealing it. Is, it. is there almost a case to say maybe Hibs knew they were chancing their luck and we've came out on the wrong side of it, but what is an additional game, really? I don't, I don't know. Aye. But yeah, anyway, it's done with. Uh, as I say, I, I'm off the ilk that they made the incorrect decision on this occasion. Um, I, I'm not angry they have done it, but I still think it's incorrect. No, absolutely. Uh, right. Dundee United at home um, on, on Saturday, 3 o'clock, 4th versus 5th. Um, it looked for a long, long period, uh, even though we were getting a bit of a pumping up at Aberdeen with 10 men, that we were somehow going to hold on to 4th place until Mark McNulty scored his first non-penalty goal of the season, his second of the season late on at uh, St Mirren for Dundee United to put them above us. Um, Liam, what, what, what have we made of Dundee United this season, really? Um, they've been really hot and cold. I or look warm and cold. <laughs> uh, I think they've been a slight improvement on the Dundee United the last season, but like not like major improvement. Uh, I think they've probably played marginally better football than the Dundee United the last season, but um, they're still not a good football team. Like they, they find themselves in a place in a league where really everyone outside the top three struggling to, to, to string together a, a run of games. Um, I think give Tan Courts a bit of credit, like where it's due. I think with some of the recruitment has been decent, and I think that has probably papered over a few of the cracks. Um, but they are still, uh, you know, predominantly a team who are quite limited footballers. Um, so I think they find themselves where they find themselves. They probably based on the fact that no one else is really kind of taking impetus to go and take that position. Um, the team that beat us, you know, in the game earlier in the season, I think it was in the October time beat us 3 because we were just absolutely abject that day, not because of anything fantastic that they did. Greg, any further thoughts on Dundee United? Um, you don't know what Dundee United is going to turn up. Um, obviously, we got scalped off them at home, um, but as I'm saying, that was probably more down to us being very limited in our play. Um, I, I think Dundee United are an OK team. I think they're probably middle of the road, to be honest. But... <clears throat> They have showed that they can come Easter Road and beat us pretty easily, so we need to be right up for it. Yeah. 
Ari, I'm um, not going to get you to talk about Dundee United again for the third person in their own, unless there's anything that you wish to really go in on them. Um, what what do we need to see from Hibs this 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 weekend in terms of performance, in terms uh, on the back of this break? What what do we need to see before we talk about team selection? Just no matter what eleven players on the park, what are you wanting? As uh, we've said it, I've said it a few times. Um, I, th- I think against Motherwell, especially in the first half, we were quite direct. We we looked like we wanted to make things happen very often in the first half and I think it's something that's kind of been lacking for from our identity um, especially since the turn of the year um, I think just getting bodies forward and in the box and flashing across the goal like that Melkerson goal like obviously the the second one was gorgeous but see the first goal I just want that I think that's what's been missing from Hibs especially this season because with the players that we've got we've not really got those types of guys that will make those runs across the keeper and I'll tap those shots in but there's no point in Chris Cadden putting in 10 decent-ish crosses a game if you've not got anybody in the box to get on the end of them I just want us to have a objective um, because it seems that sometimes when we go forward, like I think defensively for the most part, we've been quite solid under Maloney, but I think offensively we look quite lost at times. Any comments on no offence? No? Yeah, I mean, it's bad. I can see it, really it, see it bad. pairing you. It needs to grow up. <laughs> you got away with an NFL red zone mention on the, on the, the coverage earlier with Adam, and I was feeling generous because we had a guest on. I was like, I'm not going to pick him up on that, but he, he got away with that one. I just don't get away with that one. Away with offense, like offense. I just, I, 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 I'm, I'm offended by his offense comment. What, what do we need to see from the Hibs offense, and what sort of personnel well, would we the like to see at the weekend? Just a, just the final third. Um, <laughs> we need to see a bit of movement in the final third for a start. Um, yeah. Defensively, we are good. That's that's a universal term, so we can use that one safely. Um, but going forward and in the final third, I feel like we really lack options um, when we're on the ball. I feel like we, we lack creativity. Um, we're not we're not inventive enough in the final third for me, so attacks just sort of seem to fizzle out. But if we can show a little bit of desire, um, like Melk or someone getting his head on the cross at the front post then I don't see why we can't beat them Liam there will be a few more trick plays from the quarterback um, mm. maybe run, run a few Hail Marys um, nah I'm all almost joking nah I, th- I think I think Greg summed up pretty well I think yeah, we do we do we do need to be a bit more um, a bit more inventive take more risks if you want to put it that way Um just, just mix it, just mix it up a bit, like, and and, and stop being um, so fucking predictable all the time. Yeah. I know that it feels like really harsh feedback, you know, based on you know the fact that we we, we, we beat Motherwell, but you know, if I'm being honest, the second half performance against Motherwell wasn't fantastic. I know it's easy to kind of flip the narrative when you lose one game and all of a sudden be quite down on it. We were professional, but we didn't, we weren't particularly creative. So we do need to get our creative players more involved in the game. Um, Hopefully we're going to benefit from getting a couple of players back from kind of injuries as well. And obviously we've got that one big suspension that we talked about. But um, personnel is important, and we need we need we need some of our better players back fit and firing and ready to play. Yeah, you just talk. You mentioned the suspension and injuries and stuff like that. Obviously Paul Hanlon came back from injury last weekend. Late on, um, Hibs have tweeted out for, uh, pictures of Harry Clark in training. Uh, Today, uh, today being Monday, so there's a, sort of a good week there um, that he's hopefully been able to train. Looks like the majority of the squad have came back today after some probably well needed as opposed to well earned time off. Um, but and and that sort of defence with Porches being injured, uh, I'll just come straight back to you, Liam. What what do you expect to see? A three or four? What what names? Um, I, I'll be honest. I think Harry Clark's probably been training for quite quite, quite a wee while. I know it, it was said like training today, but I, he's been posting pictures of himself being up and training for a while. So I think if he's good to go, he comes in the right centre back. To be honest, I think we need him in there. Um, I think Paul Hanlon comes straight back into the team if he's if he's fit and good to go. Um, and hopefully Jake Doyle is as fit as well because I think we could do with him back in back in midfield. Could do with his composure back on the ball. Um, so I think I think there will be a few changes. Probably a back three. Um, I'm not sure that's the, maybe the consensus of what we should do. But but I think I think in all likelihood, given kind of Maloney's preference for that system, mm-hmm. I think it will be three at the back. If we were to go to a three, I'd be if I could pick it right now with the players available. I would probably lean on Hanlon, Doig, and Clark. 
probably would be my three. Harry, Greg, what would you be looking at? Uh, and that on that defensive side of the ball, um, where we have been decent, uh, what what would your be set up be looking at there? Um, you can take a note of the date and time. Um, because I would <laughs> yeah, what's like coming here? Paul, I, I would actually like to see Paul Hanlon back in the squad. To be fair, <laughs> back at start eleven. <laughs> Um, oh, big uh, world! I want to get off. There, there are there are some performances um, <laughs> that are not good enough. Um, Rocky Bashiri was <laughs> horrific. <laughs> Liam, please calm down, son. You'll do yourself an injury. Um, For those not watching on YouTube, get on fucking YouTube right now. <laughs> um, yeah, Rocky Bashiri was absolutely miles off it. Megan Stabardine, um genuinely dreadful. Should be dropped for that. And I think that if we could have the experience of Hanlon alongside Harry Clark and, and Josh Doig, I think we'd be fine. Um, ultimately, as a club captain, so we probably should include them back in the squad. But we've got a lot of games coming up. We've got a centre-half out suspended, so we need them. Um, and stick with Stevenson in midfield. OK. Harry, defence? Uh, I'm... I'm going to double down on what I said last time. I think that um, Rocky, as bad as he did perform against Aberdeen, I think that he is kind of a project. So Mm -hmm. I would rock with the back three of Hanlon, Bashiri in the middle, and then Clark on the right. Um, I think it frees up your best midfielder, Lewis Stevenson, to slot back into centre mid. Um, So, yeah, that would be me happy. Josh Doig, left wing back. Aye. Okay, so that takes us into the midfield. What Harry just keep us going on your team selection? Josh Doig left wing back, Stevenson at centre mid. What what you going um, for to for the next two or three? Ideal world, we've got um, Doyle Hayes back, so we'd put him in there, and then um, that give you enough buff at the Drop heart of the midfield. Is is John Neil fit? I, yeah. I didn't play okay. against Aberdeen. Oof. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm and slacking, Motherwell. lads. I'm and you slacking. were definitely at Motherwell. I know, I was definitely at Motherwell. I thought, I thought, he, got injured. I thought he got injured again. Um, I know. Um, all right, no, okay. Poor, poor Stevenson has to drop down to the bench then. I'd put Doyle Hayes and Newland, and then I'd put uh, Henderson forward. Um, potentially, I'd, I don't like the concept of playing two left-footed midfielders, so when they play um, Stevenson and Newland at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I'd put Newland over him just because he's got that bit more of a experience in the modern day in central midfield. And then obviously the right wing back is going to be your cadden. Any disagreements there if Doyle Hayes and Newell are both fit? Do they both play? Yeah, I would say so. And and massive hypocrites, the lot of us, because for weeks we <laughs> said that they're too similar, but we definitely play them together. Uh, so does yeah. does as the consensus then that despite a pretty pretty solid run in the team that with players coming back by the looks of it anyway look we are talking hypothetically here around Harry Clark around Jake Doyle Hayes is this the game that Lewis Stevenson drops back out of the team no it's harsh it really is harsh because I think he's been very very good but I think he yeah this is the game he drops out Liam you were shaking your head left wing back Keep him in the team. Like for me, keep him in the team. I know I, I, again it's you know, hypocrisy again here, but I, I I just think that he's a calm and steady in presence, and I think he needs to play for me. I, I just I, I don't. So would that me, be over see... Josh Doig or one of the back three? Or... Nah, Josh Doig left centre back, Hanlon middle. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, Harry yeah, yeah, Clarkson yeah. right. Um, I I, I, I do I do think Stevenson has to has to play. I think when he's when he's played this season, generally we've been a better team as a result of him playing. Um, I'm not precious whether or not it's him or Doig at left centre back. I was going to say, does it mean? Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I think I would like to see. Stevens, I think it's been decided that if one of them's playing in the back three or even as a two, then it's going to be Josh Doig. But I would like to see Stevenson as the deeper one of the two. Just I think Doig's just going to give you a little bit more in the front three, eh, sorry, in the forward positions. But yeah, I think that for me, that's that's your strongest left hand side, especially if you're playing with a back three. Obviously, if Porches is fit, then it eh, sorry, available, then it probably changes to Hanlon at left centre back with. Portress in the middle and, and Harry Clark on the right again if he's fit. Um, forward positions, Harry's mentioned you and Henderson. For me, I'd be looking at Melkerson down the middle again, probably Jasper and probably you and Henderson. That would pro- that would probably be my three. I don't know. I can't think of anyone that I'm I'm leaving out there. Um, Liam, Greg, Harry. Um, I've sort of finished your team for you. I'm guessing, but there's a lot of probably's in there, Ewan. Um, I would have to say. Melkerson and Jasper 
up top and with you, you and Henderson just in behind or whatever. Um, I think there's enough creativity there in the in the final third to, to make things happen to get to get us fucking scoring goals properly, like a proper football team. So, what was the what, like, what was the team at Motherwell again? Let's just so <laughs> who knows. Dre, so Dre, um, Dre Wright played. Yeah. Obviously, Jake Doyle Hayes missed out. Cadden played. Cadden played. Doig went off early, and Muller came on. Liam, uh, Chris, mm. Chris Muller, does he is he? And whether it's probably him or Henderson, you'd think Jasper and Melkerson are both nailed on to start. For me, it would be Chris Miller. I'd go Miller, Melkerson, and Jasper. Why, just, why just, based, just based on, uh, I, th- I think I think Henderson's been good and good in flashes, but um, I, I just think that when we're playing against them, the United who are a team who really kind of similar to Motherwell in respects that they play a lot of. Um, kind of vertical midfielders who go up and down and not a huge amount of stuff side to side, uh, but are probably good at the more, um, I would say, combative parts of the game. I think we we need to get guys in the final third who are going to hurt them. We don't, I don't necessarily want lots of guys dropping short and coming into that kind of space. I'd rather they played and stuck higher up the pitch. So I'd go Jasper on the left-hand side and Muller on the right-hand side and take the game for them, play a four proper 3-4-3 yeah. with, with, two, with two actual wingers rather than a winger, a forward, and a guy who's kind of a number ten who kind of drifts in and out of the game. I want, I want to actually have a fucking go at them. Yeah, it probably is no surprise to anyone that listens in any of us. Um, someone that we know is fit and we've we've not mentioned at all is is Christian Deutsch. Um, obviously Craig Fowler done an article in the Evening News, sort of talking about talking about Christian Deutsch. Um, is there any? plausible argument to suggest that he's due a run in this team or do you see Christian Doidge even fe- featuring too much between now and the end of the season in a unless, starting capacity? Unless Christian Doidge does something fantastic in training he doesn't deserve to be in the first 11 um, he's not been remotely near good enough since coming back from injury um, I do like Christian Doidge I know there's quite a few Hibs fans that um, have always thought he's crap because he's went through periods um, even though he's had some very very solid periods he's always went through periods of not really doing much um, but at the moment is just not up to scratch at all um, and that's even after getting back to fitness so for me I don't think he's even in contention if you don't mind me going back quickly just um, oh, sure. my front three um, I think that if Harry Clark can play so this is in the world of Harry Clark playing um, I think that you've got a good amount of width on the right hand side um, so I would start um, the front three would be Dre Wright I'd put him in there alongside Jasper and Melkerson I think that Dre Wright um with that width, you kind of have freedom on the left where Jasper can kind of float into and then Dre Wright can just kind of be annoying in the middle of the park, which I think he's quite good at off the ball. Um, Melkerson, if he can make his runs in behind, then he can always be a danger. So that would be how I would line up the team. I think Dre Wright's not done anything to deserve to be dropped and he's probably, um, in my opinion, maybe the fourth or fifth name on the team sheet at the moment because I think he's probably been one of our better players in the last month, even though nobody will give him credit for it. You never seen Aberdeen, did you? I don't know. No, I was, was, it really, oh, was it really bad? Was it really bad? <laughs> no, oh, you know, you know, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't bad. He, he you know, he, good, he just, man. he just. I think you seen Dre Knight's limitations at Aberdeen. There was a couple of wee half chances that maybe just someone with that little bit more of a spark, a little bit more of maybe just a little bit more speed, whatever it is, he could. We could have done more with. Um, there was a few times it did break down, but that being said, I thought Dre Knight was really, really good at Motherwell. So mm. you know, it happens. Are we able to sit here and say anyone was that good against Aberdeen? Probably not. So, you know, like like you say, Harry, it maybe would be harsh. But I think what we did speak about last week, Liam, is that the squad's starting to look a little bit healthier. That We're able to start having discussions around who should play as opposed to, fuck, who's going to play. Um, <laughs> let's just get a little bit ahead of ourselves here. We've got two really big league games coming up, obviously. We've got the Derby the weekend after this. Points total... What are we, if you were to guess right now, points total, and is it enough to get us to the top six? That's the that's the number one question. And I'm going to say three points, and it's enough to get to the top six. I won one and we're in. Like, if we, if we beat Dundee United, then the Hearts game is not a worry. I don't think that's the wrong attitude, to be honest. I think the Hearts game is a worry because we are so far off at the moment. Yeah, no, um, but just what, what do you expect, Nick? I don't know. I really don't know. I think it would be incredible. But so Hibs to get beat at the weekend and beat Hearts away. 
Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I think I think three points is the bare minimum. Um, and probably four points is the bare minimum. But three points probably does get us in it. Um, but obviously I want to see us get the full course, six. Yeah, However, no, I, mean, I don't think we're at that level where we can win. We can win both games. To be honest, I think I think we're miles off it. And for me, I think Christian Doidge is should be should be nursed through the pre-season. I think he needs a pre-season under his belt, a proper start start again. But yeah, I think he, he's so far off it as well. But I think that's it. That's been the story of the full season, to be honest. There's been so many players that have just been miles off it at different points of the season. It's just happened that players have been off it at the same time or whatever. And yeah, it's difficult, but this season will not go down as one of the classics anyway. No. Well, I'm looking unless we do something miraculous at Hamden. Yeah. Liam, what, what what do you expect from the from the? I seen you sort of, I think you sort of nodded along with our assessments there, but the next two games, top six, confident, not confident. Like I'm looking at the fixtures, I don't think there's a way we can mathematically secure top six this weekend. Maybe there is, but I don't no, think there is. No, nah, we can't. I, I was having a look at the league table. Actually, try to do some spur of the moment research there. Um, I was actually going to try and make a, call, uh, a case for two points being enough, but I just don't think it will be based on the fixtures. Uh, I think three points is going to be enough though. Um, four points would absolutely secure it, but, but I think I think three points is going to be enough. I don't want to um, kind of give away my guess and give away my prediction for the Dundee United game, but I'm quite confident that we won't need to go to Tyne Castle and get something. I think we'll be okay. Um, I, 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 take, take away the red card ace I've been I thought there was enough in that game yeah. and the Motherwell game to make me think if we just improve upon those performances should we'll have be just be about alright yeah yeah right well take us in score what do you want Hibs um, I just think that we're going to finally get some goals at home I think we're going to find a way of playing that maybe suits these players and I think just having had a couple of weeks rest and being able to bring a couple of new bodies back in the team just to freshen things up a wee bit and actually just you know, filling out a proper bench with, with guys that are real value add players on the bench I think we'll just find enough to, enough to do it. Value adds pushing into Harry territory there that's, that's some serious business talk that Liam, come on <laughs> hey, Harry, score prediction um, well, as as we've learned, Sean Maloney doesn't really like to beat many teams in the top flight, but he did like pumping Dundee United. So I reckon we're going to pump them, and I reckon it's going to be 2 1 Hibs. <laughs> Greg? I actually took my prediction, but I don't think it'll be a pump, and I think we'll go two up. Um, exactly, aye. And, and then they'll score, and it'll be like backs to the wall, Alamo stuff for the last 10 minutes. Um, and somehow we'll see it through. Um. So the games this season have been fairly high scoring. Was it two three ones up at Tanadice and a yeah. three now at Easter Road? I think Hibs are going to sneak it, but I think it's going to be one now. I don't think the I don't think either team are exactly firing on all cylinders in the final third. And I think our defensive qualities will see us through this game. Uh, and I think we I think we'll create a good few chances, and I think we'll do just enough to take one of them. Uh, whether that be a Calvin Ramsey style own goal or whatever. Uh, I'll take a Calvin Ramsey style on goal. I'll take a Melkerson volley, a Melkerson heater. I don't give a fuck as long as as long as we win, really. Um, How have we managed to get through an entire episode of Dundee United without slagging Tam Court once? I was going <laughs> to. You didn't get... even give um, him credit. I mean, I mean, yeah, I don't think you can slag him. Um, <clears throat> Sit in fourth. Um, yeah, sitting fourth above us, it's be a bit. Bad to, to slag him when he, I mean, I know that he picks up cones and it was interesting puts the though, balls in yeah. the bag, but don't know about you. I follow a couple of Dundee United fans on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> see, at half time, it pays last, uh, the, uh, last weekend. Um, they were shouting for me on Twitter for him to get sacked, and then <laughs> last minute, turn around in the second half, last minute winner, and they're like, get fucking in, we're going to Europe. Like, it's just the nature of the league right now, isn't it? One thing it's, I would say about so Tam Quartz. I think Tam Quartz is in the same bracket as uh, Graham Alexander in the sense that he's just an absolute torn face. Like, I don't often beat, see Hibs beat teams and then listen to the opposition managers and get annoyed, <laughs> but he's just so whiny, he annoys me. I reckon Graham Alexander will be a job shortly. 
Aye. Aye, that's coming, I think. Well, do you know what, though? That's the, the thing is, you could probably say that about five or six managers, just depending on the... Sure, follow them. <laughs> 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 depending, depending on where the, the, next two, the next two weeks go. Um, but look, aye, international break, I was going to say, is, is over. Um, but it, it's no, because uh, Scotland are playing... Well, it is when this is released, but it's not right now. Um, but aye, silly season has started already. Scott Burns... Uh, Jack Alnwick. Um, is it a rumor that um is completely impossible that it could be true? No, like you know, he's a decent Scottish Premiership goalkeeper, but again, Scott Burns sees Aberdeen and for player thinks I need to get central belt clicks. Um, Harry, what was your thoughts on the Jack Alnwick rumor? Like, see, on, on the front of it, I don't think that Jan Anik's a terrible goalkeeper. I think that he's probably, I'd probably put on a par with Macy, to be realistic, but he'd, take, he'd command a lot lower a wage, so I think it would be a good move for Hibs. But I just think it's such lazy and tiring journalism, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. as, as you say, he's literally been like, all right, Aberdeen are interested. Who are always interested in players Aberdeen are interested in? Oh, let's throw Hibs in the mix, which is just shite patter. Like, just do yeah. your research, and if it's no true, then he post it. Do I think it was interesting as well that he tweeted moaning at Hibs fans, then fucking deleted the tweet, like as if to say I've I've been called out again almost. Um, Liam, you've probably been the most critical of the goalkeepers um, this season. Um, Patrick McPartland tweeted saying that Hibs are pretty pretty all right with what we've got. Um, we've got more pressing areas. Where, where do you land on that train of thought going into the summer? I know we don't want to get far too ahead of ourselves, but. You always have to look to improve on what you've on what you've got, and I think if the right player becomes available at the right price without giving it too much of a classic manager and not <laughs> interview answer, I think <laughs> you've got to you've got to go and pursue that player. Um, you know, statistically, if we've got the tenth or eleventh best goalkeeper in the league starting for us, then I think tenth or eleventh is not where we want to be in the league. So we should yep. be aspiring to sign better goalkeepers. It's not about. Um, you know your agenda or what you think of that keeper as an individual. It's about actually what, what 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 do they give to the team I am also very very conscious of the fact that I think Sean Bologna does want a goalkeeper that can help Play. distribute the ball and I and I'm, I'm not sure we've got one that can that can do that so I think I think we probably will be well, I think we potentially might be in the market for one um, whether we can get one at the kind of right price point that we're looking for or not I don't know yeah. um, I don't think it could be top priority though. No. You know, I'm, I know I'm saying that it's there, there's a lot of other positions I think that we're, we're kind of we're going to need to bring. We expect a turnover, in. don't we? And we if do, the goalkeeper's yeah. one of them, then contract situations dictate that. I mean, there's there's a number of guys yeah. that are out of contract at the end of the season. There's a number of loans that we'll have to make decisions on, but ultimately come to an end um, at the end of the summer without any action from us. So the squad will be pretty thin by the time all those players go back. We'll still have two or three goalkeepers in the books. So, for, for, for me, like the, the other priority areas. Yeah, centre midfield, centre defence, up top. Uh, you know, Kevin Nisbet's not going to be available for the first part of the season. You wouldn't have thought. There was obviously question marks around Dodge given given his kind of injury troubles. So, yeah. there's a lot of areas that we need to we need to, we need to bring players in. And then, I'm not even touched on the wide positions. So, aye. Aye, a bit of surgery um, required. Greg, goalkeepers. Jack um, Allen, <clears throat> Scott Burns, wherever you want to go. Um, probably wouldn't want Jack Alec, to be fair. Um, he's not a bad goalie, but I just don't think he's what we're looking for. Interesting at the distribution piece. I mean, literally, the, the goalie's distributing at five yards, ten yards. So I don't think yeah, he's a goalie yeah. that can that can that can play out any further than that because that's Mullery wants to play out for the back. So the pass is five or ten yards. It's not difficult. Um, both goalies under contract, as far as I'm aware, for next season. So I, I don't see that changing either. Either one of them, if one of them goes, he's, he's sold or whatever. But I don't see that either. So I just think that probably the one goalie I would go for if, if I had to choose would be Seagrest at Dundee United. Um, good keepers. A lot, of, a lot of speculation in the last couple of years. But I don't really think we need to change that. I think, like we say, there are more areas of the park that we really need to address before. Before we look at the goalies, I think if we're being honest as well in our assessment of Macy, I think um, it's been an improvement since, since, since the Browski, came in. Yeah, since the Browski had his 
debut in the derby. I think Macy's probably played his best football for Hibs. I don't I'm think that would coach be a as well. So yeah. I think that Maloney will want the goalies to work with the goalie coach and give them time with that. The goalie coach will, I'm sure, will make an informed decision on whether he thinks they're good enough. But yep. they've both played enough this season that maybe not so much Dubrovsky, but the goalie coach works with them day in, day out. So if there was any any issues, then I think that they'd be flagged and Hibs would be in the market, but I don't see that. Yeah, right. Well, it's the first of may well, what may well be multiple double episode weeks uh, in terms of two different series. And please, please, please let us know what you thought of State of the Game, what you thought of this. We don't really care. We've been doing this for long enough now. Uh, but State of the Game, let us know if there's any other topics and stuff like that that you want us to, to go through. Um, it's probably going to be one a month if we're being if we're being totally honest, just with times and stuff. And well, we've got lives. Uh, we've not got. I don't know. I don't know how the little boys out at Lombangers do it. Like that's all I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know how they. I don't know how they produce that level of content. But aye, boys, thank you very much. Uh, and hi, we'll be back on Monday next week. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. On the hubs. <laughs>